So we are about to do something very important, which is wrap up um, and reflect on what we've learned today. And we've chosen uh, Catherine Bertini, who I know is known to all of you. Uh, Catherine is a distinguished fellow at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Um, she's someone who, in fact, mentored me in the way that uh, I was suggesting we mentor these two, two young women. Um, she was executive director of the World Food Program, has served in a, many other roles, and I'm pleased to have her come up on stage and help us reflect on what we've, we're going to take away from this. So, Catherine. Thank you, Alicia, and congratulations to Alicia and to Evo and to all of those from the Chicago Council who put together this wonderful program for us today and yesterday. A few thoughts about what we heard all day today, if I can use just a few words, starting with some of the main topics. We talked a lot about progress, future, youth, women, technology, markets, business, basics, and leadership. On youth and women, I think it's extremely important what was said today about youth not meaning just boys and young men. Youth is anyone who is young, and we have to invest, we said, in education and training and income opportunities, especially in rural areas that are viable, efficient, and profitable. We have to look in rural areas also for what kind of activities we can use to build so that young people who live in rural areas have similar opportunities to those, their sisters and brothers in rural, in uh, urban areas. Doug, talked to, Doug B. Ryder talked to us about the youth bulge and the mandate that we have to do more for this population. And so many people, I don't think there was a panel that went by when women and men did not talk about women and girls, about invisible women, about women eating last, about women feeding their families, about how they invest primarily in their families. And certainly by now, we can see that there are many actions that are moving in this direction, which is, for those of us who have worked in this field a long time, very encouraging. But my favorite line about women today was with, with Femi, okay, who, and by the way, didn't she do a fabulous job? When Femi Oke said of Sarah Richardson, this is what a scientist looks like. We talked about markets, a lot about markets, but just a few highlights of having open, stronger markets worldwide, free-flowing trade, and one speaker mentioned how African, African uh, food imports have increased eight times. And while that's good for those countries and businesses that are selling into Africa, there's so much more capacity for Africa itself to grow and to be able to produce and process more food. And we just heard uh, from farmer Jesse about Guatemala sweet potatoes saying, yes, they might be competitive, but over the long term, they're gonna be better uh, better uh, uh, partners for us. We talked a lot about business, about education and training, about banking opportunities, about investments big and small, about jobs and how critically important that they are in rural communities, not just uh, producing food, about insurance plans, for instance. We talked about production technology, from renting tractors to illuminating with electricity to downloading big data into simple bytes, into cell phone stories and inspiration and extension, into satellites and drones. And, one, and most importantly, the old topic of R&D, of research and development. We put new life into how important it was when Dan Glickman said, for instance, if we don't invest more in public research and development, then we will never achieve what we're trying to achieve. And I found especially encouraging his story about taking Congress people to ICRASEC in, uh, in India and having them become now salespeople really for this whole concept. But we didn't forget the basics at least once in a while during this conversation uh, because we talked about for instance, what's wrong with this system where farmers are still the hungriest? 
and what we might think about in order to changing that process. And about food waste, with a brilliant book and discussion about 40% of our food which is thrown away, a whopping 4.4 billion metric tons of food. And then finally, we talked about leadership. Leadership at the community level, among women and men and young people. Leadership at the national level, where there were a lot of different aspects discussed. Improving agriculture policy in Africa, including policy in a lot of different places relating to business and business transactions. Improving trade policies. President Muhammad talked about the importance of democracy in this context as well. And, and Ann Veneman uh, crystallized a complicated and important panel when she said we need to move toward integrated rural economies, integrating government, trade, extension, and technology. But then we were reminded, I think by Agnes, that national leadership, while critically important, is not enough but global leadership is key. We started the morning talking about global leadership and we ended the day talking about global leadership. We heard about it in Roger Thoreau's documentary. We heard about it just now from Liz Schreier when she talked about this in the US, the strong pushback from Congress about potential cuts in programs that we discussed today. We heard about it initially from Evo and from Doug especially when Doug talked about the bipartisan nature in the U.S. of support for agriculture development. And certainly we were encouraged by hearing from Senate leadership, Senate leaders, uh, one of the Senate leaders, uh, Senator Moran, who said, we have a moral commitment, a human commitment, and it's in our interest to have this commitment to make a difference. And I can assure you that what would be in the pipeline before will be in the pipeline again. And that kind of commitment from this Congress is the kind of commitment that we know we need and we've intimated or said directly all day from the world that in this world where there are so many people who are totally cut off from food, that we need that moral and human and financial commitment from parliaments, congresses, presidents, and prime ministers around the world because in fact they're the ones that can stop some of the crisis from happening. They're the ones that can fund the hungry, the needs for the hungry. And they're the ones that can help everyone else, including all those represented in this room and watching. They're the ones that can help create the policies that will help farmers worldwide be able to thrive and to grow. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Great. Well, um, we're going to put a map up here. Is it already there? It is. Um, wanted to share a few stats with you. You can see some of this. But just to note, we had 67 countries in the last 48 hours participating in this dialogue or watching us. So to say eyes are on this conversation is kind of an understatement. Um, I want to thank a lot of people who are part of this result and part of making this conversation so great. So first is for everyone who is a keynote speaker, a moderator, a discussant, people who told stories yesterday at the solution session, questions from the floor, thank you. And thank you, Catherine, for wrapping us up so well and helping us to look forward. I also want to make a major thank you to our funders. Um, the Chicago Council has, couldn't do this work without our funders, and we are grateful to our lead sponsors this year, Abbott, Syngenta, and United Technologies. We also thank our supporting sponsors, Cargill, DuPont, Lando Lakes, and RTI International. And we also acknowledge the generous support of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation over many years. We also want to thank our civil society partners who donated their guidance and their resources to help making this, this event a success and also the report. As many of you offered um, stories, photographs, examples of case studies, we appreciate all of that. Um, you've also been tweeting and helping us promote the dialogue here in the U.S. and around the world and we are deeply grateful. Uh, to our next gen delegates and our rapporteurs and social media ambassadors, we thank you for your engagement and for your inspiration and your commitment. Thank you for being here. 
Um, I also want to acknowledge the staff. You all have probably noticed there's quite a few of us here, and the event has been running on time. I hope you've had a good experience. Could I ask the staff to raise their hands? Give them a round of applause. Thank you. And we've also had help from CMP for this event. We could not pull it off in Washington, D.C. without you. Thank you for everything you've done for us. I also want to thank the 2017 task force. Many of them are also in the room, not all of them. Um, they guided the development of this year's report and gave us a lot of feedback, a lot of advice, made a lot of connections for us. And that is also true of our advisory group, which has been supporting us for four years. Um, they have offered guidance on the strategy and on the approaches and the conversations we need to be having, as well as the content of the report you have in your hands. And that was guided by our co-chairs. I'm staring at Dan and Doug. Um, Dan and Doug, you all have offered such leadership and guidance to this program, and we are so grateful um, for your participation. And I actually would just love to have a round of applause. I loved hearing your content today, both of you, and having you speak from your expertise. So thank you, Dan and Doug. And finally, I actually want to bring our moderator uh, back to the stage, our host for the day, Femi Oke, who has done a tremendous job. Can we give Femi a round of applause? Social media has been very clear that you were a big part of the reason people kept tuning in. Thank you for keeping us going. I, I couldn't quite hear. What did you say? <laughs> Please, Femi, feel free. Thank you. <laughs> A.G. Karamora, do you remember him from a panel, two panels ago? He's the co-chair of Solutions from the Land. He reminded me what I kind of forgotten before today, which is that this glass is not half empty, it's half full. Thank you for reminding all of us about that. It has been a remarkable day. Um, I've enjoyed being here. You've inspired me. I hope you've inspired each other. I have one more job to do, which is to say, ladies and gentlemen, this symposium is almost over, apart from 60 minutes when you can be in the atrium having a happy hour. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. <laughs>